Here is it. I don't know, Nicole, if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Oh, it's great. Welcome here in Saumur. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. As we were trying to, to connect the, the computer <laughs> and, uh, and Twitter, uh, I've just given some few words about, uh, about you and about your works in, uh, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. If you agree, uh, I'll let you speak. And I think an operator will uh, pass from slide to slide during your, your speech. In any way, before you begin, I wanted to thank you very, very much to be here uh, hardly amongst us today. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so somebody, somebody gave me an, inf an, important, uh, an important information. I'll give it in French for our uh, audience. Je, je signale juste qu'à Vancouver, il est 2 heures du matin. Merci, uh, merci Nicole pour votre intervention. Great. So, bonjour, hello, good morning. It, it's two in the morning for me here. <laughs> I wish I was there to meet you all in person. It's a huge disappointment not to be able to. I'd like to thank the organizers for assembling such a wonderful, fine symposium. I apologize, but despite my French name, I'm going to give this in English. My forefathers from France would be pleased if I could deliver this in French, but I've not yet attained that goal. Hopefully soon. I will speak today about some exploratory research in Canada, a little bit on the province that I'm in, and I'll have my assistants change the slide for me. So the purpose of this paper or presentation is to describe the current state of quest tourism in BC, including a little bit about its evolution, some of the emerging types, and the motivations and experiences of a subset of equestrian tourists. And this is a picture of me on one of my horses navigating with my GPS. Change slides. As many of you know, this area is devoid of definitions. Uh, I know when I first started looking at this, I was seeking a definition of equestrian tourism, and I was looking forward to talking about that with all of you at the conference. So this is one that we devised for our study last year, and that is equestrian tourism is travel inspired by the horse for recreation, leisure, and business, encompassing all activity that has the horse as its focus. If I can slide change. The research questions in this study is initially to, to, to see to what extent equestrian tourism is being pursued as a niche market within BC, and if so, by which parties. The second question was to look at the types of equestrian tourism being provided by suppliers. And the third question was to explore the nature of the travel experience for a subset and to find out if there were potential enhancements that need to be made within the province. Slide change. The methods that we used to answer these questions are a little bit of a mixed method approach. Originally, uh, Horse Council BC uh, developed a study in 2009 on the industry, so I'll consult some of that to show a little bit about the size and status of the industry and to demonstrate some of the changing trends. We also did interviewers with stake interviews with stakeholders in both the tourism industry and the equestrian field to demonstrate an awareness of equestrian tourism as a concept, and also to pick up any evidence of collaboration. The third method we used was content analysis on websites, mostly tourism websites throughout the province, 
to try and develop a typology of equestrian tourism. And finally, we did some in-depth interviews with a subset of equestrian tourism to get an indication of their motives, their activities, and their overall experience. Slide change. So I'm going to start with our findings. And the, the top sort of gives you an indication of the size of the industry, but more I'd like to evidence some of the changing trends that are happening. Horses have always played an important role in the heritage and economy of the province of BC. While they were mostly used for work and for support in ranching, they're now a highly valued uh, in their role for recreation pursuits. As you can see the image here from the 2009 equine study, the largest increases in horse ownership, according to this study, have been in the recreation sector, whereas the number of horses owned for working, guiding, or racing have all been decreasing. Slide change. In this changing landscape, uh, equestrians and their horses in British Columbia have become a new subset of niche tourists in the province. And as was described in a previous presentation, a number of these owners of horses are in the peri-urban areas, and a number of them are middle-aged with a higher income. And so their strong interest in recreation, coupled with a strong in appetite to learn new skills, often required travel from home, has sort of been part of the evolution of this sector. While that's been happening on the demand side, the current supply side for this niche market is really not yet understood or recognized. So. I would, I would sort of indicate that right now equestrian tourism is not fully being capitalized upon. Next slide. Equestrian, equestrian tourism uh, is not prevalent on the radar in BC. There's, while there's a dominant use of trail riding images on a number of the tourism or travel websites, um, they're often of denoting others, um, people riding horses that belong to others, i.e. at guest ranches. One of the regions in the province profiles promotional information on ho horse trails. And other than that, when we did content analysis, we really see very little evidence of horses and tourism in combination. There's no common language or shared understanding about equestrian tourism. And I still get people looking at me uh, with a smile, equestrians and tourism together. Um, but more recently, Horse Council BC, which is the provincial uh, organization to advocate for equestrians, has asked Tourism BC, our provincial marketing body for tourism, for information on how to get started with the process. And this model in British Columbia will require that multiple stakeholders come together to form an industry-driven model. So I, that for BC will be a little bit of a challenge, I think. Next slide. So in order to help facilitate this, uh, one of the things that we feel is needed is additional clarity. And clarity may be able to be provided through a typology. So based upon our content analysis, we've developed a typology that you see in front of you, essentially with two segments, and each of those with three sub-segments. The first segments are people who are traveling with their own horse, including competitors who are traveling to participate in equestrian sport, recreationists who are traveling to participate in recreation or education activities, and breeders who are traveling with horses for breeding, selling, or purchasing. The other subset of travelers are people who are inspired by the horse, but who do, whose travel does not include the transport of their own horses during the experience. So they may participate with 
um, or they may participate with horses, but they would not be their own. For example, guest ranch visitors who participate in activities with others' horses, such as trail rides and clinics. Equine education, where people who are traveling to events to participate in education on horses, that should be horses, not equestrians, <laughs> um, but they're not necessarily um, going to interact with a horse. And the third grouping or subgrouping would be equine shoppers, people who are traveling to purchase supplies and products. Next slide. As we talk to stakeholders in the field, uh, operators of various tourism establishments, we found some consistent findings with others in that those in the businesses of the guest ranch sector identified stronger with the horse culture as opposed to the tourism culture. However, for those that are offering alternative forms of accommodation, such as bed, bail and breakfasts, owners are identifying stronger with the tourism industry. This might be a good thing for British Columbia because if we're going to try and bring the two together, it will be important for stakeholders to have a bit more fluency in both. Slide change. We also see some innovative new products emerging throughout the province. One of some of these, for example, you can see the the, the photo above. Um, this is a bed, bale, and breakfast that offers a number of things like cowgirl weekends and games weekends with horses. And on some of those subsets, I was talking about weekends where people learn how to paint horses or photograph horses, but they're not necessarily bringing their own horses. So there's this growing awareness of of potential to bring people out of urban areas into more rural areas um, for things beyond the traditional trail riding activities. If I can get a slide change. We also note some stakeholders in the system that are not necessarily operators. So most of our local and provincial governments are in some way, shape or form beginning to be, uh, develop facilities and infrastructure for improved equestrian tourism. So trail systems and trailhead facilities and campgrounds are being developed. And these, if promoted properly, um, may serve to attract and serve equestrians from farther afield as well. Slide change. So overall, the built infrastructure appears to be coming along in an ad hoc process. Um, however, there's little or no effort to market the existing product to equestrians. There's no emphasis showing that this activity is being promoted to those who are interested in horses, which is a missing pillar. If I can get a slide change. The last question we wanted to focus on was to learn a little bit about the equestrian travel experience from one of the subsets or uh, on our typology. So this is a subset under the people who travel with their horses and the competitors and their competitive trail riders. That's me again in the photo with a horse who's not really interested in the water. <laughs> this is a long distance riding sport. Um, and the people have to travel for competition through all regions of the province. This requires overnights en route and at the competition site, anywhere between two to five nights a stay. These people are also avid users of equestrian trail systems around their home and beyond for training purposes. Next slide. The motivation for this group is obvious for competition and to connect with nature. But when we talk to them, there's a number of insights that could help British Columbia become more streamlined for equestrian tourism. This group, based on their travel, indicated a lack of safe highway pull-offs and services for larger trailers and trucks, um, which most of them are staying in. Uh, that's a trend in North America, the great big trailers. Um, and so these people are having a difficult time 
navigating rural roads and rural communities where their competitions are located. This is also intimidating to many, like, like one of the previous presentations, a number of these people don't have experience with this, and this is an intimidating process. The second concern is that access to trail systems throughout our province do not allow many equestrians in them. For example, our provincial, our provincial park system, um, many of the parks do not allow equestrians. So some of our notable tourism attractions are currently not allowing uh, equestrians in them. The travel to and cost, uh, the travel cost to and from the islands on the west coast, British Columbia is a coastal province with numerous islands alongside and a number of the horses owned are on the islands in the southern portion. And so to travel to any of the destinations on the mainland, there is prohibitive travel costs. And finally, this group mirrored that there's no information to obtain to make their plans for traveling. So when they do want to go somewhere, they need to do significant research on how do we get from A to B, where can I pull off with my horse, where can I get fuel, how much does the ferry cost, how do I book a livestock booking. All of those details of travel are very time consuming for this group. Slide change. So I'll close my thoughts with a few thoughts to enhance the system. BC is currently at a, a state, oh, I don't know if I said slide change. Uh, Nicole, um, Nicole BC can you hear me? BC is currently at a, an early stage in our development. And the first thing I think that we would suggest is to enhance the, the understanding Nic of Nicole, the I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yep. Yep, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you uh, with this distance, but uh, I have to, uh, to ask you to shorten your uh, presentation, if possible, to keep the timing we had of 15 minutes. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's I've say, two, let's more say two more minutes. Okay. So the last couple thoughts, uh, closing thoughts, uh, is that we need to understand the current and potential significance. And I think that the typology is something that we can do to help us with that, but it needs to be tested. Slide change. The second one is that we need more research on the motivations and nature of the experience. And this might help those on the demand, it might help us understand demand, but also it might encourage more supply side development. And last slide. There is a need for increased collaboration and dialogue, both within the equestrian side and the tourism side, and hopefully more supply side collaboration so that we can see more new products emerge. So with that said, I'm sorry for the time. No, no, no but problem. There's a, a final slide there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank